Hi, my name is Craig Lewis. I'm the owner of Night Owl Circus Arts in Johnson City, Tennessee. And in this video, I am going to show you guys how I go about inspecting a fabric and also how to tie a fabric to a rescue eight and how to tie it as a two color silk or a hammock, which is actually the same knot. Aerial rigging is a huge and highly specialized topic. There's a lot to know about it, and it's obviously very dangerous if done incorrectly. If you're wanting to set up your own aerial rigging, you should absolutely not approach this as a DIY project. You need to work with a professional aerial rigger, and you'll often also need a structural engineer. I see a lot of unsafe rigging out there, and it's really scary. At the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, with almost every aerial studio in the world closed, a lot of people wanted to do their own rigging. And the problem of unsafe rigging really started to grow exponentially during that time, and people were getting hurt. Seeing that happen was my motivation to begin teaching an online aerial rigging class once a month over Zoom. This class is only three hours long, which is nowhere near enough training to make you into an aerial rigger. But it's enough to familiarize you with the fundamental concepts, so you'll be more prepared going into this. You can find more information about my aerial rigging classes on my website at nightowlcircusarts.com slash rigging. Aerial silks come in low, medium, and high stretch. Low stretch is most common, and that's typically used in beginner classes. Low stretch is made of trico nylon. Trico has a distinctive trait to it. It stretches in one direction, but not the other. So if I pull it long ways, the way that I would pull it when hanging from it, it has little to no stretch. But if I pull perpendicular to that, it stretches quite substantially. So I like to check for this trait as a first step of an inspection to make sure that I've actually got Trico. Next, I'm going to inspect the fabric for any holes, abrasions, or wear, or other kinds of damage. I have a method that I invented myself for doing this. What I do is I drape the fabric over my head like a ghost. You look super cool when you do this, and it'll do amazing things for your hair. But the real reason I do this is that if there's any holes in the fabric, they almost light up when you're underneath it like that. Holes that spread vertically up and down the fabric are a real hazard in that they can easily catch fingers or toes, but the effect on the strength of the fabric is minimal compared to a hole that's spreading horizontally. So often vertical holes can be repaired, but if a hole is spreading horizontally, this will have a significant impact on the strength of that fabric, and you will definitely need to either cut or retire that fabric. This fabric appears to be in perfect condition, so let's tie it to a rescue eight. So I've got a loop here right in the middle of my fabric. I'm going to start by just making sure this is nice and clean and tidy. It makes this knot a whole lot easier when it's tidy. I'm going to take my bite and I'm going to push it through the big end of my rescue eight. And I'm keeping a finger in between the fabrics here. I'm going to pull through a decent sized loop, come down in between the tails then come up through the big loop again. Find the middle. And then take that over the little end. Pull down on each leg one at a time to tighten this. And we do want to make sure that the ears are exposed. And this can take a little bit of practice to get it tied right to where the ears are exposed. But we really don't want the fabric draped over the ears like that because over time the, the ears will puncture holes in your fabric. So keep those out and that's how you tie a silk. All right, so this time we're gonna tie a two color fabric. Now this is the exact same knot that you would use to tie a hammock. And I know that confuses people sometimes, but what I have here is two pieces of fabric. If I was tying a hammock, I would have one piece of fabric looped back and I'd have the ends. The knot itself is exactly the same. The only difference is whether it's two separate pieces of fabric or one that's got a loop on the other end. So tying a two color fabric here, the first thing I wanna do is get it really tight and tidy. I will say this knot takes some practice and getting it really tight and tidy does make this a lot easier. I think that definitely helps, but this knot will take probably uh, a bit of time and a bit of practice for you to really get it looking nice and tidy. So I've got a section here in the middle of the fabric. Everything to this side is going to be my dead end and this side is going to be my live end. 
live end meaning where the aerialist is actually going to hang. So, oh, I want my dead end tails to be at least about five or so feet long. We definitely want to have enough extra fabric there that we are not worried about a little bit of slippage being a problem. So I'm going to take my rescue eight and place it perpendicular to the fabric and I'm going to bunch it up and push it through the big loop. Go ahead and find the middle. I'm going to get my hand through there, get a decent sized loop. I'm going to turn my rescue eight 90 degrees, split my live ends and take the loop that I made down in between the live ends. Now, the dead ends can either both go off to one side, or if you just like having it symmetrical, you could split them and have them go to opposite sides. I usually just let them hang off to one side. I'm gonna, and I haven't made quite a big enough loop, I'm gonna get a little extra. I'm gonna take that up and over the little loop. So with the last knot, we would have gone back through the middle. In this case, we're not gonna have room to do that, and that's okay, we're just gonna go over the little end, and then, I'm just going to pull each tail tight one at a time, again, being careful to make sure I'm keeping the ears exposed. I have four separate tails to pull on here. I'm going to pull on each one one at a time to get this nice and tight and tidy. Ears are exposed and that's how we would tie a hammock. I would typically do something with our dead ends. Um, that's uh, partially just to get it out of the way, but it also serves as a backup if there was to be any slippage in the knot. So I just like to daisy chain it. You can tie whatever you want, really. It doesn't actually matter. But a daisy chain looks nice and tidy. And there's a two-color silk. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out my aerial rigging classes. I teach them once a month over Zoom, and you can get more information at nightowlcircusarts.com slash rigging.